I've been hiding this for so long and it's slightly nerve wracking. Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Amanda and this is Birch and Lily, where I talk about all sorts of fun, crafty goodness. Today is another regular podcast episode. It's episode 141 and I have lots of fun knitting to show you today. Before we jump on in, there are a few places you can find me on the internet. The main one is birchandlilyfiber.com. You can also find me on Instagram at birch.and.lily and everything else, all the things I talk about, all the places you can find me, my Ravelry, my Ko-Fi, all that fun stuff. It's all linked down below in the description. There are two other things I just wanted to say quickly before we jump on in as well. First of all, next week's episode is going to be a Q&A. So I have been asking on Instagram if anyone has any questions, but if you have any questions for me that you want answered, leave them down below in the comments for me and hopefully I'll be able to get to them in next week's episode. As well, I did want to let you know that finally <laughs> the yarn collection has a release date. The collection will be releasing October 1st of this year. I will probably pop up some little short video closer to so that you can get all of the information on the collection theme, the colorway names, all that sort of fun stuff. But um, the date is set. It is October 1st of this year. So in a couple weeks, the collection will be live. So... I've obviously changed my setup. <laughs> I don't know. I was getting bored. So I figured it's basically the same background, but I'm like in a different corner. I don't know. We'll see if it sticks. I have to move my lighting and stuff around a lot more, but before I would just sit down and go because it was like in a corner. But I don't know. I thought it'd be fun to switch things up. I was kind of in this corner for last episode, but I don't know. I've scooched a little bit more playing around. Might as well. I don't know. I've been feeling not really blah, but I don't know. I've just been feeling like some. I, I wanted a change. So this is the change we're going with. That is all I have for announcements. You know where you can find me. So let's jump on into what I've been working on. The only issue with me being in this corner is it's a lot harder for me to take like standing up shots. So I think as I talk about things, I'll show you some close up stuff. But then once I'm done filming this, I'll do some B-roll and have it on that side of the screen um, of me standing and kind of showing off this garment a little bit more since it's finished. But this is my rest sweater. I finished it maybe a week ago now. Um, and I really like it. There isn't really much I would change about it. Um, but we'll get into that. Anyways, this is the rest of sweater. It's a pattern from Lizzie Hester and it is coming out on September 30th. So very, very soon. I know I've been saying I would keep everyone updated on when it releases and it's going to be September 30th. So I knit this out of Birch and Lily Fiber Co. Birch Sock and Birch Surrey Held Double. Um, this colorway actually, believe it or not, <laughs> Uh, it's gonna be a one-of-a-kind color. I'm not going to dye this in the shop. It was just too um, Unpredictable I could not get the the Results I wanted with it every time even with like a strict written down dye Recipe, thank you. That's what I wanted dye recipe. So um, there will be something similar to this in the shop but I have tweaked it a little bit so that it uh, is more predictable. But yeah, the main color here, this is Birch and Lily Fiber Co, Birch Sock and Birch Surrey held double. And then maybe I will try to stand up. We'll see. We'll see what you can see on camera. <laughs> okay, so you can see a little bit. These stripes are all fiber spates cumulus. So I'll go through the colors quick and then I'll sit back down since you obviously cannot see my face. This lightest one here the slightest one here is Mithril, then Slate, then Gloaming. It's very hard to point to these <laughs> when I'm looking at a screen. Gloaming, Aubergine, and then this last one here is Indigo. Let's get into it. I am very happy with how this turned out, minus one thing. And it is how the pattern is written, and I think I just... I should know myself better at this point and maybe I will at some point cut this neckline off and re-knit it because it is a little 
tight. It's meant to be that way. It's also meant to be a lot higher. Mine is knit to about half the length that the pattern calls for. It is folded over, um, so I knit like let's say for example the pattern called for me to knit it to six inches before holding it over. I did it to three. I don't know the exact measurements. Those are made up, but gives you a general idea that I did shorten it quite a bit. So I've learned I have a really short neck and if I would have knitted to that full length it would have been like right up under my chin and I would not have liked it. This is feeling a little snug though. It was a little hard to get over my head. That could be on me and maybe I should have knit it a little bit more loosely when I folded over and joined it. So I wouldn't say that has anything to do with the pattern but it is a little tight and I'm not sure I like it right up against my neck like this but yeah I might I'm just looking <laughs> I'm looking at it in the camera here now I might if I'm to do anything who knows I might get used to it and it might just be because it's still kind of summer it's starting to cool down but it's still kind of summer and it's just feeling a bit warm but I might really enjoy it in the fall and the winter so we'll see but what I would do is just um pick up the stitches right underneath where it is and then cut one and then just take the whole thing off and re-knit it from the body up. So yeah, we'll see. That's really the only thing I don't like. Otherwise, I am very happy. I knit the size six and I think that gives me, I'm trying to think, I really should bring up my pattern notes when I do these videos. So I'm about a 40 inch bust and I think the pattern size for the size six was about a 46 inch bust. So I've got a decent amount of positive ease in this, which I'm quite happy with. The sleeves fit great. I love how they are like more fitted and a nice taper like down through the whole sleeve. And then they just have a nice two by two rib on the cuff. I just bound them off in pattern with the it's called it's not Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off it's a different one I use I think it's called this just super stretchy bind off if I can find it I'll link it down below I found it so many years ago now that I kind of just have it memorized and don't know what the name of it is but I used a stretchy bind off on that and on the bottom as well it does have a split hem I love a split hem, especially when it's longer in the back than the front, which this one is like that. So I really, really like that. And then I just love the look of the, the stripes. It's such a unique way, I'm gonna hold it up because why not? It's such a unique way to use up scraps of like mohair or surrey. So all these stripes are just, uh, mine is a surrey, uh, surrey alpaca and silk, but you could do a mohair as well. And it's just that held double. And it makes for such a soft, soft stripe, which makes me think of the, oh, what's it called? It's in my pattern notes. The Instant Crush Sweater by Hohi Locatelli that I talked about on last week's episode. It's knit with two strands of Surrey or Mohair held double. And I just, oh my gosh, if I had a whole sweater knit out of this, it would be a little cloud. So that makes me want to knit that Instant Crush even more. <laughs> but yeah, I, this sweater is beautiful. The fit is great. There is so much detail in Lizzie's patterns, like so much detail and not in a way that it's confusing and hard to find things, but it's just organized super well. And she makes sure that you understand exactly what you're doing and it's worded really well. I had a great time knitting this and I definitely want to move the first sweater either the first cardigan or the first sweater, which are two other of her patterns. I want to move them up in my knitting queue for sure, because after knitting this and how easy and just mindless almost it was, I know I would like those patterns as well. Something else I haven't talked about, which I really like, one of the other details is this really wide raglan. And I just think it's beautiful. I don't think I've knit anything with that wide of a raglan before. I've only ever done raglans that are like uh, two stitches or or they have some sort of other detail in them. So like a cable or something, but I've never knit a sweater that has a, I think this is six stitches. It's six stitches wide and I think it's really beautiful and really classy. So yeah, hopefully 
the b-roll that I've inserted in here I don't know how long it was because I haven't filmed it yet but hopefully that gives you a good idea of what the sweater looks like I'm really happy with how it turned out and I think it's just it's a great knit I know a lot of people have been asking me like I said when it's coming out and if it interests you even in the slightest I would highly recommend grabbing the pattern I feel like even if you just wanted to knit a really, really basic raglan with a thick raglan, um, what is this called? I think it's just called a raglan. If you wanted to knit a sweater with a really thick raglan and even just omit the stripes, I would highly recommend the pattern even just for that. One other thing I forgot about, I don't know if you can see, so each of these stripes has like pearl bumps around them to kind of make them stand out. I don't know, it was just something unique and different and pretty and I just feel like all the details in this are really well thought out. So I think that's all I have to say about the Resta. If you have any questions always of course ask them down below. I'm happy to answer. I know I've got really out of sync again and I'm suddenly filming the day I need to upload which I haven't done in ages and so I just feel like I'm behind on it everything. I know I haven't answered everyone's questions on last week's episode but after I get this edited and uploaded I'm gonna go back and do that so if you had a question there I'm sorry it's taken me so long but I will be getting to it. Anyways I think that's all I have to say about the rest of I have four different whips to talk about today and this one the first one I'm gonna talk about is new. I have a friend who is having a baby very soon and I was invited to her shower <laughs> this week and I was like yeah I should cast on a sweater for her so I cast on a sweater not for her for the baby but that is this <laughs> this bag is from is this from? this handmade life sorry I have a couple quilted bags and I mix up who they're from all the time but this one's from this handmade life just plain on the back and then beautiful quilting on the front and I have cast on the baby Aosta sweater. This is a pattern from the knit Pearl Girl and I saw it and I just had to. It's absolutely adorable. <laughs> just wait till you see this. It's obviously knitting very fast because it's a baby sweater but look at this. It's so little <laughs> and I'm showing you the back. Whoopsies. <laughs> it's so... Uh, and now I moved all these. <laughs> I have um, the sleeves on hold for this on just some scrap yarn because I didn't have any of my try on tubing kicking around and so I just put it on yarn. So there's yarn dangling um, and there's still yarn dangling. Now we're good. So this is the Baby Aosa sweater by the Knit Pearl Girl. This here I actually let me just unpin it. I think I'm past the point in knitting this anyways that it's not gonna bother me if it's unpinned but it will have buttons so I'll give you a bit better of an idea so it will button right here it'll have three little buttons just so it's easier I'm assuming to get it on the baby because babies wiggle a lot and don't like things put over their head from my personal experience so it does have that it is connected so there's no like gap there you knit a couple stitches together so that it has the really nice fold and then I'll have three little buttons on there and now I'm just knitting the body so it's so small and it's so cute and I love it I'm knitting size C so the third size um, it is a six month size but I know a lot of people always tend to get tons and tons for itty bitty like newborn sizes but not enough for other things so I figured I would knit something obviously she could wear it whenever it'll just be a little larger depending on the size of the baby I figured I would knit something that could be worn a little later in the winter so yeah I'm working away on the body I think I'm about halfway done and then I'll just have the teensy little sleeves to add and the buttons I'm just gonna go I think to Hobby Lobby and grab like a pack of I don't know what I'll do for buttons. The yarn, if you can't tell, is sparkly. It's not really showing up on camera. But maybe like some pearl buttons or something? We'll see what I can find. This yarn, like I said, is sparkly. It, I have no idea what it is. I know it's from Expression Fiber Arts. Um, and when I did 
some calculations to figure out that it was indeed DK, and I could use it for this. I did look, they have a DK sparkle base, but I can't remember what it's called. And I was gifted this yarn when uh, the fiber swap was still a thing, and I, when I was gifted it, it didn't have anything like no names, no fiber content, nothing, just said it was from Expression Fiber Arts. So it's very soft. It feels like a merino content to me, and then with the Stellina mixed in there. So this is, it should be done by next episode. It needs to be done by next episode because the shower is on Friday. <laughs> so I'll make sure I take some b-roll of it for next episode so you can see it finished, but it's been really fun to knit. It's just straightforward and small and and fun. So I'm trying to think, I think that's all I had to say about it. Really like the pattern. There is a little cardigan version too, but I don't know, I figured for a younger, a little baby, that a pullover would be a little bit more practical than a cardigan, so that is what I went with. Yeah, very happy with how it's turning out. It looked to me when the, the, the pattern yardages, sorry, not it looked to me, the pattern yardages said I would need two skeins of yarn, which I had, but I've only really got, like, I don't even think I've used half of this first one, so we'll see what I end up using. I It was never going to be enough for me to use in a project for myself. And I'm not really a huge sparkle yarn person personally. So I thought it was a great choice for a baby. Something a little bit more neutrally. And yeah, I hope that they love it. And it's fun in it. So usually I do itty bitty like little newborn baby socks as a gift. But I just was not feeling it this time. And so tiny sweater it is. Moving on to projects for myself, because <laughs> that's mostly what I knit. Have I started Christmas knitting this year? No. Do I always say I should? Yes. Did I do it last year and really was glad I did? Yes, but I haven't. So this is <laughs> my Alder sweater. It's a test knit by Rebecca Klo. This is a Jenna Rose handmade bag with like a full on strap and everything. I love this bag. And it's very fall now with the acorns and stuff. Very cute. Anyways, this is my Alder sweater test knit. I am knitting this out of two different colorways from Explore Knits and Fibers. So the variegated one down here, this is Moonstone. And this top one here, I did order from their Leave No Trace collection. So that is like skeins that are discounted that didn't pass the quality check fully. So like I've noticed with this one, it's a tonal, but the dye didn't take as evenly as some of Explore Knit's other colors. So I'm assuming that's why it didn't pass the quality check, but I think it's perfectly fine. Looking through their Instagram, kind of at some of their colorways, I'm pretty sure the purple is Avenoir. Um, so that's what I'm gonna call it. <laughs> it doesn't come labeled when you order it from Leave No Trace. And yeah, Moonstone. So those are what I'm using. Moonstone is my main color. And Avo Noir is my contrast. And I didn't put progress keepers on any of these last week, but we're gonna do it this week because they're right behind me and I can grab them really easily. So I know for a fact, I don't think I, not for a fact, but I'm pretty darn positive that I had not split for the sleeves last episode. I have now. And there's yarn wrapped around everything. Um, so yeah, I've split for the sleeves. I have also added the collar. This collar I am also slightly concerned about the tightness of. So we'll see. The nice thing about this one though is it's picked up and knit on after. So if I find it's too tight, granted it has quite a bit of stretch. So I might be able to just block it out quite a bit. But if it is too tight, I'll just undo the bind off on this and re-knit the collar and pick up more stitches. So it's not as complicated of a fix as the rest of the sweater would be, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens when I block it. Anyways, this is where I am. The texture on this is just incredible. And with the Moonstone, I just think it's so pretty. It's such a subtle variegated look throughout because there's like purples and pinks and blues in there. I just think it's really pretty. And once it blocks, oh my goodness, it's gonna be amazing. Um, it's definitely a stiffer fabric. 
there are a lot of floats um, with that being said though this is not color work you're only ever working with one strand of yarn at a time um, so it's more of like a mosaic knitting which does mean that it's slow going because unfortunately you're like knitting every row twice knitting the stitches you slipped on the last row on the next row if that makes sense but it, it, it makes for a slow knit but I think it's gonna be worth it and I think it feels a little stiff right now but once this blocks out it's gonna be so cozy so I'm so happy with this so far I love the raglan right there how it looks with the increases it's just beautiful like that little arrow sort of detail love it and it's just been it's been so much fun to knit I have the pattern memorized for it now which is great it's an eight row repeat but it's pretty easy to figure out where you are and like what you have to do next so now that I've been doing the body I've just kind of been going and not really having to pay attention I think we'll see maybe when I finish this uh, skein of Avenoir I might pick up and do some sleeves just to give myself a little bit of a break from the body because sleeves I don't know I've done that on a couple sweaters now and it really seems to motivate me so if I knit some sleeves that might be fun we'll see we'll see what I'm feeling like but yeah I I'm knitting the size five for this I'm glad I went for the five it'll be a little bit bigger and squishier and cozier when I block it out I'm trying to think I really should <laughs> take notes in my notes here on what um, that's going to give me for ease. But yeah, it's going to be a little bit larger than some of the other sweaters I've knit from Rebecca Book. It's going to be a little bit larger than some of the other sweaters I've knit from Rebecca before, and I'm excited about that. So yeah, that is my Alder sweater. It's so great. Oh, I wish you could feel it through the screen. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. I have also put work into my Skyline Pullover, which is a pattern I'm testing for Tori Yu. I am also knitting this out of Explorer Nuts and Fibers. Uh, I think I said this last episode, but for some reason, all of these test knits that I'm doing for the next little while, I felt like using some of my Explorer Knit stash, so that's what it is. This is Joshua Tree National Park. It's blowing out as per usual, but it's a beautiful, beautiful variegated skein. It is lighter. Um, it's got lots of different shades of pinks, greens, blues, purples, maybe less blue, more purple, but it's beautiful. And I feel like I made quite a bit of progress on this. I'm almost done knitting flat on it. I'm almost ready to knit on the round and that is always super fun. <laughs> so this is where I am. Now I'm going to untie this actually. I have one of my tried on tubings tied just so it doesn't I, it, there sh it shouldn't slide out, but I am extra paranoid that it might, so I tie them up in a little knot. And it doesn't seem to do anything to, like, wreck the integrity of them, so that's what I've done. It can be hard to get unknotted, though, as you can currently see. There we go. Make it a little bit easier to see what I'm doing here. There we go. So... The whole, um, the two saddles, which I think last time I was just working on one of the saddles, they are both totally done now. So you can see how you knit those two rectangles and then pick up stitches along the two sides of them to create the rest of the sweater. So the whole back is complete now and I'm working on the front. I have the shaping for the collar all done. Um, and yeah, I'm just working flat back and forth for the front. I think I have about two more inches left on the front and then I'll be able to join it in the round. I'm knitting the size four for this one. It's going to be dropped shoulder with these saddle shoulders and then the ribbing on these saddles does carry all the way down the rest of the sleeve so I think that's going to be a really fun detail and then the body will just be stuck in it so yeah I I find sweaters are always really hard to show when they're just like this and not like if I held it like this it looks like a bib but actually that kind of 
it's me peeking through. <laughs> that kind of shows the saddle construction a little bit better. What's going on there? Yeah, it's been good. It's been nice to have some just plain stockinette on the go. I have this and I have um, what I'm going to show you next, which is also being worked flat right now. So lots of flat knitting, which shockingly, now that I learned to Norwegian purl, I don't mind it that much anymore. It doesn't put strain on my fingers like it used to to purl a whole row. So I really don't mind it. The Norwegian purling, I would say, is slower than how I used to purl, but the fact that it doesn't hurt my hands is worth it to me. So that is that. I don't, I don't think there's much else I have to say about it. Once it gets joined in the round, it'll be a lot easier to see what's going on, but I'm excited. I love Tori's patterns. I don't think there's one of hers that I haven't liked before, so it's gonna be a fun one. On that note, I haven't pulled progress keepers for any of these, so I'm gonna do that quick so that I can put them on both of these, <laughs> the Skyline and the Elder, and then we'll move on to the next project. I'm not gonna fully put the progress keepers on right now because, you know, it's not, I guess, why would you know? It's not the most ideal situation at the moment to be doing it, but I have pulled some fun ones and they will be there for next episode. So the final project I am working on is my sibling sweater my size. This is a pattern by Laura Penrose. I am so excited to be test knitting for her. I have admired so many of her patterns and now I am testing one of them and I'm excited, excited that I am. So I am using, like I said, more Explore Nancy yarn. This one cake is a mess right now, uh, but this top one here is Nutcracker, and this is Daybreak, and it is a striped garment, and it's beautiful. I am knitting a larger size than I normally would uh, because I want this to be really big and squishy and baggy, and Laura did say when she put out the testing call that it would lend itself to being knit larger with quite a bit of positive ease, so that's what I'm doing. So I'm just working on the back right now. And it has this gorgeous increase line here. It's really hard to show just because it's being knit flat right now. Actually, that's not bad, but you can see the stripes. I'm so pleased with the colors I chose. I just feel like they're so rustic-y and beautiful, but like a little bit different than anything I've seen any of the other testers using. A lot of them are doing like one darker color and then a cream, so. I feel like Nutcracker kind of lends itself to something a little bit unique. So yeah, I haven't done tons, but I'm getting there. I'm almost done the back of the body. I think I have about a stripe left and then I will be able to pick up and cast on for the front and then I'll be joined in the round. And once it's in the round, we all know it's so much more fun. So that is where that is. I am knitting, hmm, it's a size six. So, yeah, I think it's going to give me, which seems like a lot, um, but I think it's going to give me about 14 inches of positive ease. But because it is, because of the construction it is, um, I'm not worried about the fit. I know I had issues with my laneway sweater earlier this year being too large and not fitting correctly, but that was because it was a yoked garment. And so... The fit is just totally completely different and it was much too deep in like the armpit region and just awkward and floppy where this is not going to be like that just because of the construction of the sweater. So very happy with that. I'm trying to think here. I do have, I have no self-control. I have two new <laughs> Estimates that I've signed up for, but they're not due for quite a while. So two different sweaters. One is it's a redesign for um I'm gonna say vert knit, but I know that's not it. Maybe ver. Um, I'm assuming it's French. I am helping test her redesign of her cardi jumper. And I'm gonna be using this yarn from Mulberry Fiber Co. This is morning hike. So I haven't swatched for that yet, but I will be soon. I um, just want to get probably the alder done before I 
swatch and get going on this. And then I love testing for Sarah Opie and she had a new cardigan coming out as well. So I'm going to be testing that as I was saying that I've been doing so much flat knitting and well, it's okay. It'll be great. I'm, I'm very excited. Both of these pieces, the cardigan for Veritnit and the cardigan for Sarah Opie are both pieces that I know I'm going to wear constantly because I so I don't know what I'm going to do for the yarn for Sarah's test knit. I'm going to dye it myself, but I haven't decided yet. So now that the new, the newest collection that's coming up is, you know what? I might as well say what it is since it's coming out soon. <laughs> I won't give away the colorway names, but since it's, uh, it's, it's going to be out there. I've been hiding this for so long and it's slightly nerve wracking. But the collection is themed around one of my favorite childhood movies, The Parent Trap. So <laughs> I've created all my colorways based off of different scenes from the movie. And I'm really excited to, I know you've seen a lot of the colors here on YouTube and Instagram, but to share the inspiration behind them. And it's a smaller collection, but I would like to expand on it in the future. The Parent Trap is one of my absolute favorite movies. We would sit down and watch it in my grandma's basement all the time and it was so much fun. <laughs> I remember the ear piercing scene, if you know that one, I would like hide under the blanket because it freaked me out. I don't know. I just have so many good memories of The Parent Trap and so that is what the collection is. So I don't know if the yarn I'm going to die for a cardigan is going to be part of the expansion of that or if I'm going to do something else in between. I don't know. I haven't decided yet but uh really excited. So keep an eye out on Instagram for those colorway releases over the next like probably starting at the end of this week into next week. I'll be releasing the colorway names and photos of it on all the different bases and stuff. Um, and then it will release on October 1st, which is a Sunday. And then yeah, we'll go from there. But I haven't decided. I want the cardigan. It has pockets. <laughs> Maybe I'll pop if I can find a photo on Instagram in here. But I want it to be something that I can wear quite often. It's just like a big, long, cozy pocket cardigan. So probably something neutral, but then at the same time, something neutral with like a little pop of speckly might be fun. I haven't decided. So anyways, that's in the future. <laughs> but yeah, I think that is all I have to talk about on this episode. Make sure you leave me questions down below in the comments if you have any questions for the Q&A. If you haven't subscribed already, please, please do so. It helps the channel out so much. It helps you out because you know when I upload new videos and it helps me out because it gets the videos out to other people on YouTube so that we can build this community together. So I really appreciate it and I will see you next week for the Q&A video. Bye! <music>